Hello and welcome to our UC Berkeley virtual campus visit. We know there's a lot going on in the world right now, so we really appreciate you taking an hour out of your day to spend it with us and learn about all about our campus. A little bit about myself. My name is Alyssa. I am using the she, her pronouns and I will be today's moderator. I'm originally from Salinas, California, so it's about two hours away from Berkeley, so not too far. And I just finished my sophomore year here at Cal. So it's a kind of bittersweet hitting that halfway point. And I'm studying society and the environment, a really cool cross section between humanity and how we interact with the natural and built environment. A little bit of my involvement. I'm part of the UC Rally Committee, which is our big spirit group on campus. I'm also involved with Greek life and leadership in the residence halls. So just a little bit about our tour today, it'll be a 45 minute presentation and you will be able to type any and all of your questions through that Q&A function you find at the bottom of your screen. We will also be sending out a series of polls so that as you get to know us and our university, we'll be able to get to know you and cater the tour towards you. You'll also notice that this session is being recorded, but there are also different versions available on our website so you can hear from different guides if you would like to hear more perspectives. Now this is a campus overview from the student perspective. So that being said, there's no admissions or financial aid information, but we do have separate admissions presentations if you are interested in that. Finally, we will end this with a Q&A and we'll do our best to answer any and all of your questions that you've sent through that Q&A. And if we don't get to them live, make sure that you still ask all your questions because we have lots of ambassadors on the back end ready to help out and type some answers for you. So without further ado, on to our lovely guides, Carson and Amy. Hello, everyone. My name is Carson. I use the pronouns she, her, and hers. I am originally from San Diego, California, and that's where I'm coming to you guys from right now. Um, so Alyssa, so I am a rising junior, so I just finished my sophomore year at Berkeley, and I'm majoring in nutritional science and psychology. And besides being a campus ambassador, I'm on the Cal Women's Club water polo team, and I'm also a member of Food Association at Berkeley, which is a really cool organization where we have speakers come um, that work in the food industry to talk about like how we would get involved in the food industry and things like that. So if you have any questions, please ask them in the Q&A whenever they pop into your head, and I will pass it off to Amy. Hi everyone, similar to Carson, I'm also from San Diego and I use the she, her, hers pronouns. Um, I'm also a rising junior and I'm majoring in interdisciplinary studies with a minor in global public health. Um, outside of strictly academics, I also do research under the undergraduate research apprenticeship program. Um, I'm a field coordinator as well as um, a teaching assistant for a pre-health organization called the Field Study Internship. I'm also an intern for the Sexual Health Education Program at Berkeley, um, as well as a cultural peer mentor in our Berkeley International Student Program and a part of the planning team for TEDx Berkeley. So as Cardson mentioned, feel free to drop any and all questions you have because we're super excited to answer them. So to start off, I just want to say welcome to Berkeley virtually. Um, on your screen, you can see a couple pictures of our beautiful campus. In the center is Sturdy the Bear. Uh, he is one of our 27 bear statues on campus. He's actually the largest one and people really like taking pictures with him either when they get in or their first day or in graduation, things like that. And a poll just popped up on your as a screen asking who are you and we really want to know more about you guys who are watching the tour so please fill that out for us. Um, while you fill it out, I'll keep talking about our pictures. Um, in the top left-hand corner there, you can see Memorial Stadium, our football team, you know, plays at Memorial Stadium, which is super fun. Definitely go to the football games. They're awesome. Um, on the right-hand side of the screen there, you can see Memorial Glade, which is a huge grassy area on campus where students will hang out, they'll study, um, have picnics play frisbee, things like that. So that's really awesome as well, really fun. You can see the campus kneeling in the background, which you'll see some really cool photos of that later. That's our clock and bell tower on campus. I'm personally obsessed with the campanile. It's one of my favorite things about Berkeley. And then the bottom left-hand corner, you can see the 150W. And that is because just last year, we cel finished celebrating our 150 years of women being admitted to Berkeley, which is really, really exciting. So we're very proud of that as well. And it looks like most of you guys are high school juniors, but we have some admitted transfer students um, and some sophomore and freshmen as well. So welcome. I totally agree with Carson. The campanile is definitely one of my favorite buildings, especially now that um, our 
peregrine falcons have actually just had their babies and they've all started to fly, which is really exciting. So today we have a super packed agenda. Um, so we're gonna start off with an overview of Berkeley, looking at our campus culture and our campus history. Then we're gonna move into academics, talking about our graduate and undergraduate schools, as well as what you know the student experience is like um, as a student at UC Berkeley. Then we're gonna go on to housing and dining, health and safety, student resources, student life and athletics, which is also always super fun to talk about. Um, and then we're gonna talk about our awesome libraries as well as all of the research opportunities that we have here at UC Berkeley. And then we're gonna end with what this year has looked like for us with remote learning. So to start off with kind of Berkeley history, we were founded in 1868 and we go by a few different names. So you might hear Berkeley, Cal, University of California, things like that. That is all us. And the reason we have multiple names is because we were the first UC campus within the UC system. So we have the honor to be able to just say Cal or University of California, whereas other schools such as UCLA, UC San Diego, they have to specify um, which campus they are. So that's kind of a cool fact. Berkeley is usually used for kind of more academic side and here Cal um, more often for athletics, but all of them are still us. Our mascot is the Golden Bears, which I think is really awesome. So you hear Go Bears all around campus all the time. Oski, you can see in kind of the center of your screen, that top uh, left-hand picture there. He is our mascot that walks around at football games. You'll see him walking around on campus. You can try and give him a high five or a hug. We really love him. His birthday, I think, is the day before mine or maybe two days before I forget, but it's always really fun because I'll go to like the football game and I feel like I'm celebrating my birthday with Oski, which is so fun. Our campus size is about 30,700 undergraduates and then 11,500 graduate students. So a pretty big campus, but there's a lot of ways to make that campus feel small and feel your community, which we'll talk about later. And we also have a lot of historical landmarks on campus as well. So Amy and I both mentioned the Campanile. I love how you mentioned the Falcons because I follow their Instagram account. They're just, I love them. Um, so you can see some drone footage of our Campanile there. Um, say their gate is the picture just below that. That's a really iconic um, part of campus as well. Um, if you've seen Monsters University, the gate from that is actually modeled after say their gate. And if you've seen Ant-Man the Wasp, we actually walk through Sproul Plaza and you can see the gate there in the background as well. And that's just a little bit about our history. Um, so moving on and continuing to talk about sort of our campus culture, I think if I had to choose one word to talk about our student um, population, it would be that we are change makers. Um, all of our UC Berkeley students are leaders that are here to challenge the status quo. And I think nothing really exemplifies that better than talking about the free speech movement. And you can actually see a picture of that um, on your top right in black and white. So the free speech movement um, was a movement led by Mario Savio and Art um, Goldberg, which were, who were both UC Berkeley students at the time. And there was actually a ban on political adv advocacy on campus, which is sort of completely insane to think about now because we sort of associate UC Berkeley with political advocacy. Um, but there was a ban. And so in 1964, they started um, this movement that included peaceful protests, rallies, and sit-ins. Um, and eventually, they did actually get the administration to sort of revoke that ban. And that sort of both started the tradition of tabling at Sproul. Um, and it also led to similar movements and policies all throughout the nation. Um, and sort of on top of that, our student population is also incredibly um, focused on entrepreneurship. There are so many startups on campus. If you have a business idea, I think UC Berkeley is a fantastic place to be because you'll find so much support. And also in case you didn't know, UC Berkeley is a huge research institution. So research and innovation is huge on campus. There are so many different ways to get involved and we'll go into that um, a little bit later during this tour. On top of this sort of culture of change makers, I think we're also a really tight knit community despite being, as Carson said, such a large student population. I think um, a way to describe us is to describe us as compassionate, passionate, and really centered on social justice. We're also, as Carson mentioned, super into school pride. You can see our rally committee at the bottom right, um, and you can see them um, during in-person years, you'd be able to see them before every football game on campus, like getting you really pumped for school spirit. Um, and as Carson said, you know, we love Oski and you get to see him roaming around campus, which is super exciting. We're also really focused on diversity and excellence. So the 2020 to 2021 incoming student class was the most diverse that we've had in the past 30 years. And I think that's an accomplishment that there were, we're all super proud of. And we're also really focused on public service, whether that's volunteering on our free time or looking to how we can sort of make our future careers, careers dedicated to public service. 
So can I keep talking about that campus culture and that change maker spirit? We have some photos here for you guys to see. Um, on the left hand side, you can see the Our Voices picture. So that is a peaceful protest happening on campus. As Amy mentioned, that tradition of you know, being able to speak your beliefs is really prevalent on campus. But one thing I really like about Berkeley is if you want to participate in protests and sit-ins, you totally can. But if you don't want to, you're not, there's no real pressure to, it's really your choice. Um, that's what the movement was about was free speech and being able to talk about what you're comfortable with. So if you don't want to participate, you don't have to, there's no pressure. It's not something you have to do, but if you want to, it is there for you. And then below that, I really like um, the juxtaposition between these as then we have our rally committee and our band and cheerleaders all doing a rally before a football game, which I think is really awesome. And that's the same steps um, right in front of Sproul Hall right there. So I really like those two pictures together. Um, those center two pictures, you can see some of the research going on on campus which is really, really fun. And then on the right-hand side, you can see our rally committee with OSCE once again. Uh, rally committee, as Amy mentioned, you'll see them doing rallies for games. It's really fun. Um, a lot of my friends are in rally committee and they'll go to the dorms, the freshman dorms, um, just kind of randomly on days and have rallies and yell everyone to come outside and just have a rally at night outside the dorm rooms, which is really awesome. So that's a little, just a few kind of illustrations, pictures uh, more about our culture. Yeah, as Carson mentioned, rally community is really great. They even run um, a decal centered on school spirit, and my roommate actually made an OSCE cake um, for that decal, which was super fun to eat. Um, so talking about sort of what's happening now at, at our campus, um, as you may know, there was a global pandemic. And so I think something that really struck me the spring of 2020 was how quickly we sort of transitioned to an online um, learning experience, whereas I had friends, you know, all around the world who actually had to take a week or multiple weeks off to sort of make that transition. Um, but we understand that, you know, remote learning does with itself bring um, different challenges. And so we've been really focused on access and scalability. There's a student tech program where students have been able to for free um, get access to any sort of technology they need for remote learning, whether that's laptops or Wi-Fi. Um, all of that is sort of really geared on um, ensuring that there is equitable access to education during this difficult year. Also with COVID research, at the bottom right-hand corner, you can see a photo of Jennifer Dodna. Um, who just won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, but during this past year, she's been focused on developing a rapid saliva test for COVID-19, which was then implemented at UC Berkeley. Beyond just sort of mitigating, you know, the um, sort of how do we deal with COVID-19, how do we treat it, how do we test for it, we're also really focused on looking at the biological, cultural, and economic impacts currently and also into the future. Um, this year, I think, has also really been unprecedented in terms of advocacy and social movements. And so UC Berkeley is really committed to human rights and anti-racism. We actually have our own human rights lab. Um, and a part of my research is working in tandem with them um, to look at sort of international law in relation to conflict setting um, gender violence. And so it's been really interesting to sort of work on that as we're talking more broadly about human rights and anti-racism all across the world. And of course, this year has been really difficult. So we have also been really focused on resilience, preventing trauma and burnout. So that was about our campus culture. And next we're gonna transition into academics. So a poll should have just popped up on your screen asking what you guys are interested in. So similar to that last poll, if you could fill that out, we would really appreciate it. And you can check multiple options. So if you're not really sure, you know, click all the things you're interested in. Um, and we'll try and cater the tour towards your guys' responses. Um, while you're filling that out, I'll talk a little bit about the undergraduate colleges. So we have five undergraduate colleges here at Berkeley. We have the College of Letters and Science, the Rouser College of Natural Resources, the College of Environmental Design, the College of Chemistry, and the College of Engineering. And so, and it looks like on the polls I'm seeing, we got a broad range of things you guys are interested in, engineering, chemistry, biology, some social sciences, physical sciences. So that's really awesome. Thank you guys for filling that out. And then a quick note before we dive into the details of each college, I just wanna talk a little bit about transferring between colleges. So um, for most of the, for College of Letters and Science, the Rouser College of Natural Resources and the College of Environmental Design, it's pretty easy to kind of switch between colleges um, once you're already at Berkeley. However, for the College of Chemistry and the College of Engineering, you can transfer um, into the college once you're already at Berkeley, but it is um, more difficult to do since they are more competitive. So I would recommend if you're interested in either of those colleges applying directly to them, because if you change your mind and you don't wanna do it, it's way easier to switch out than it is to switch in. So like I said, it is possible, but it is much more difficult and not a guarantee. So I would recommend applying directly if you're interested in any of those. And with that, we'll dive into the College of Letters and Science. 
I'm super excited to see that all of you are interested in so many different things. That's definitely how I came in as a freshman. It's also a reason why I chose the College of Letters and Sciences. So I will admit I'm a little bit biased, um, but the College of Letters and Sciences includes three fourths of our undergraduate student population and there are five divisions. And I think something that's really unique and that really helped me decide on my current major um, is the seven breath requirement in the College of Letters and Sciences. You have to take courses from anything from, for example, the physical sciences to arts and literature and I think that really helped me get a taste of all of the different majors and opportunities in the College of Letters and Sciences. There are 80 plus majors, so it's sort of like an all-you-can-eat buffet. And as someone who wanted to try everything, I think that breath requirement really helped me narrow my focus. Um, and something that's also super interesting about the College of Letters and Sciences is that 17 out of our 25 Nobel Prizes have come from faculty within this college. And then the next college we're going to talk about is the Rouser College of Natural Resources. And just like Amy's a little probably biased for layers and science, I am biased toward the Rouser College of Natural Resources because this is my home college. Um, it has an environmental focus. So it has majors focusing on biological sciences, nutrition, toxicology, ecosystem management, interdisciplinary studies, social sciences, and economics and policy. So again, a wide like range of different courses and subjects to study, um, but all of those have a strong environmental focus as well. So if you're interested in that, definitely look into this college and really strong emphasis on sustainability and social justice. And you can see in the pictures here, some beautiful pictures. I think the College of Natural Resources is just so beautiful. There's so much nature and I love sitting there um, in, within the college just for like, study breaks. There's also Brown's Cafe, which is one of the on-campus restaurants. Um, on the bottom right-hand picture there, just off the camera, just barely missed the photo, is Brown's Cafe. And it's my favorite on-campus restaurant. So definitely go check it out. Um, but another cool thing about this college is along with all of the colleges are advising, especially in this college is really awesome. I talked to my advisor um, before I had actually committed to Cal and I was talking to her about some of the things I would wanna do at Berkeley. And then when I was committed, I had sent her an email and she actually remembered all of the things I talked about before I'd even committed. So I think that's really awesome. and just a testament to the advising that we have at Berkeley. I think it's so funny that Carson mentioned Browns because I have heard that they have the best paninis on campus and I didn't get to try them before we went remote. Um, but I literally did spend all of this past year working outside near Browns, even though my apartment was literally <laughs> on the opposite end of campus because the College of Natural Resources is really beautiful. So moving on, we're going to talk about our smallest college, which only has around 650 students, and that is the College of Environmental Design. Um, it is ranked fourth globally, which I th or architect architecture is ranked fourth globally, which I think is so interesting. And it is one of four majors offered in this college, along with landscape architecture, urban studies, and sustainable environmental design. In the drone shot at the bottom corner, you can see Bauer Worcester, which is home to the College of Environmental Design. And I think it's a really unique structure on campus because it's built in the brutalistic style. Um, which basically means that all of the concrete and glass that you can see on the outside actually serves environmental purposes. And I think that's really indicative of how this college tries to bring social into issues into the design profession. Something else that I think is really unique is you can see a picture of a study space um, at the top left side of your screen. Um, and so the College of Environmental Design really focuses on you know, allowing students to do hand-on applications of course content through their studio emphasis. Um, and as you can see on the slide, um, the College of Environmental Design is focused on um, being able to craft ecologically sustainable and resilient, prosperous and fair, healthy and beautifully built environments. The next college we're gonna talk about is the College of Chemistry. So this has about a thousand students and just three majors. So there's chemistry, chemical engineering and chemical biology. And the College of Chemistry as a whole is ranked number one globally for chemistry programs. So. We love our chemistry programs. It's really awesome. I'm not even a chemistry major, but I have like a berkelium shirt, um, which is one of the elements, one of the 16 elements discovered at Berkeley. And I wear it all the time and I'm not even a chemistry person, but chemistry is just so strong on campus. Um, really focuses on innovation and research. So as I mentioned, there's 16 elements that have been discovered on Berkeley, including Californium, plutonium, just to name a couple. And then if any of you have taken high school chemistry class, you might be familiar with Lewis dot structures um, and Lewis dot structures were developed at Berkeley by Professor Lewis teaching our introduction into chemistry course chem 1a and he was trying to think of a way to kind of diagram these atoms so that the students could understand like electrons better and he developed Lewis dot structure and now it's taught 
globally. So really awesome example of professors creating new teaching methods that just got widespread um, across the nation and the world as well. So we're very, very proud of our chemistry department. And another note, as I mentioned, chemical engineering, that's the only engineering program at Berkeley that's in the College of Chemistry and not the College of Engineering. So just make sure to remember that if you're interested in that major. The College of Chemistry is definitely super tough as someone who's taken chemistry courses, but you are learning from, you know, the best of the best in the world, which I think is awesome. Moving on, we're going to talk about the College of Engineering, which um, has 3,800 students. There are 11 majors and all major programs are ranked um, at least ninth globally, which I think is amazing. So you know that you're really going to be getting the best education possible. Um, as Carson has mentioned a couple slides ago, with the College of Engineering as well as the College of Chemistry, we do recommend that you apply directly versus transferring because it's just a little bit easier that way. Um, my roommate was actually in the College of Engineering, so I feel like I learned so much from her this past year. And I think one of the really cool um, resources that's available through the College of Engineering is the Jacobs Makerspace, where you can essentially get a Makers Pass as a student and you get access to all of their equipment, like 3D printing. Um, she actually 3D printed me, if anyone's watched Avatar The Last Airbender, she 3D printed me an Oppa planter, which I thought was super cool. Um, and if you're interested in learning more about the College of Engineering, because there's so much to learn and there's so little time during our tour today, you can um, enjoy our separate engineering virtual visit. That's so cool. I love that planter. I, you have to show me sometime because that's so awesome. I'm gonna have to have my roommate that's in engineering be like, hey, can you 3D print me something? That'd be awesome. Um, and next we're going to talk about graduate schools. So just really briefly, um, our graduate schools, we have the Haas School of Business, uh, which a really cool thing about this school is they do offer an undergraduate program in business administration for undergraduate students. And if you're interested in business, what you would do is you'll most likely be admitted into the College of Letters and Science. Um, that's what happens to most students. Um, and you will take the prerequisite courses. And then the beginning of your sophomore year, you would apply to the Haas School of Business. And then by the end of your sophomore year, you'll find out if you got in or not. If you got in, you're now in the Haas School of Business getting a degree in business administration. If you don't get in, don't sweat it. It's really not a big deal. We have really awesome programs. A lot of students will major in things like economics, things like that. And it really sets you up super well for business in the future too. We also have the Global Management Program where you can spend your first semester abroad. We have Biology and Business and MET program. The MET program is really awesome because you apply um, when you're applying to Berkeley. And if you get in, then you get a dual degree, um, one in business administration from the hospital business, and then also um, a degree from the College of Engineering. Uh, some of our other uh, graduate schools, we have the School of Education, School of Information, Berkeley Law, Social Welfare, the School of Optometry, which really comes in handy because you can go to the School of Optometry and get your eyes checked and things because um, we have an optometry office uh, on campus. We have the School of Journalism, School of Public Health, and the School of uh, Public Policy. And some undergraduate departments also offer graduate programs as well. So um, graduate students can do programs within the kind of the undergraduate colleges they have graduate programs too. And then in the bottom uh, right hand corner there, you can see South Hall, which is the School of Information. So the School of Information is actually our newest graduate school, but South Hall is the oldest building on campus. So I think it's really cool that the oldest building is home to the newest graduate school. I just think that's really fun. Um, and I'll pass it back to Amy. Um, so moving on to academics coming from a not super huge high school, I think going to Berkeley, which is a super large um, higher education institution, I was a little nervous. So I was actually really shocked to learn that our student to faculty ratio is 19 to one. And not only that, but 81% of our classes are under 50 students. For those classes that are over 50 students, they're typically gonna be the courses you're taking your first and second year at UC Berkeley because those are large intro courses. And what that'll look like is you'll have a traditional large lecture hall taught by your professor. And then you're gonna have smaller discussion sections and labs held by GSIs, which are graduate student instructors. So they're there to help you reinforce um, any of the content that you learned that may have, you know, sort of gone into one year and out the other during your larger lecture. Um, in addition, there are a lot of different resources like office hours, which is time that professors and all GSIs set aside where you can go in and answer or ask any questions that you have. And it's also a great time to sort of get to know your professors and your GSIs on a more personal level. Um, on top of that, there's also resources such as the Student Learning Center where you, you can get um, academic support from peer tutors who've been through those courses. Um, and they hold anything from open office hours to um, actual uh, sorry, <laughs> um, test prep um, sessions. And then there's also individual advising. 
yeah, going to office hours and the student learning center is such a great, those are both great resources. So definitely recommend going to those. And I'm gonna talk really briefly about remote learning. So this last year for fall of 2020 and spring of 2021, uh, Berkeley had all remote classes. So fully remote, but we had hybridization goals in line with CDC guidelines, um, but we did end up being remote for the year. Uh, but Berkeley really wanted to still preserve that really awesome academic experience for students. So all students were given a Zoom Pro account, which was really great. So you could host meetings with your friends, have game nights, have student organization meetings, things like that, which I thought I really appreciated. Classes also were taught had synchronous and asynchronous learning. So kind of depending on the class, professors were able to kind of decide what they wanted. And I thought that provided really great flexibility. So some classes just had synchronous classes where you logged into the Zoom uh, and went to lecture kind of more like normal, just online. And then some classes also had asynchronous where they would just post lectures for the week and you could watch them at your convenience and then kind of maybe do an assignment at the end of the week or something like that. And a lot of classes that I found actually did both. So my professors would have a synchronous class, they'd record it and then post the lecture if you couldn't make it or wanted to watch the lecture again, things like that, which I thought just added so much flexibility for your students' um, schedules and really deciding when you wanted to work, when you wanted to maybe just do homework, watch lectures, things like that. And all those resources have also been online as well. So we had virtual drop-in tutoring through the Student Learning Center. I went to the Student Learning Center for exam reviews for my organic chemistry class, and they were really, really helpful. And there's also a strong emphasis on instructional resilience. So the school has been creating these semester in the cloud classes that are really meant to be really interactive online. And I took a semester in the cloud class and I really enjoyed it. Um, I think that the school did a really great job um, of transitioning so quick to remote learning. I know Amy mentioned earlier on the tour that we transitioned really quick and did a great job. And I absolutely completely second that as well. And if any questions about anything, please drop them in the Q&A. We have a whole bunch of ambassadors um, ready to answer, type answers to your questions as well. So if any questions, uh, please ask them. I actually, funnily, funnily enough, was using um, the SLC services this past semester to also study organic chemistry. Um, so you'll hopefully be seeing a poll pop up and it's asking you where you're joining us from. So if you could take a quick minute to fill that out, that would be greatly appreciated. Now we're gonna talk about housing and dining. Um, so for incoming students, we have residential halls and suites. Halls are sort of what you traditionally think of when you see a movie about college. It's a bunch of um, singles, doubles, triples with communal bathrooms at the end of a long hallway. Whereas suites, you might have a couple rooms um, that might be uh, doubles or triples. And then sort of your little household shares one bathroom. Um, and I can see that we have a lot of people from Northern California, Southern California, and from the Eastern time zone. So thank you so much, everyone, for being here with us today. Um, we would like to note that freshmen get priority. And the reason why we say that freshmen get priority and it's not guaranteed housing is because in order to get housing, you have to first make sure that you sort of complete all of your applications on time. And then also super, super important, um, when you are ranking your preferences, you get to rank five different preferences, but your last one must be any room, any location to guarantee housing. So just make sure to do that when you are doing your housing application. Um, on top of, you know, sort of all of that, we also have a lot of different resources. So there are residential assistants or RAs um, who are current students um, and they're basically there to help ensure your transition and to help with any sort of issues that you have in your residential halls. And they'll do a lot of really fun events. I remember my freshman year, I was in Blackwell and they had a lot of different fun game nights as well as you know pancake night and stuff like that. And so definitely um, use them as a resource. There's also theme programs. So if you're interested in a particular passion or a particular identity, um, there are a lot of different theme programs within all of our different residential halls that I highly recommend you check out. Um, there are also common areas um, where you can sort of hang out with friends. I saw a bunch of, I think it was the water polo team, they were watching The Bachelor um, or The Bachelorette during my freshman year. Um, and something that's super um, useful now that I'm living off campus is actually having that meal plan included. So there are a lot of different cafeteria options as well as like Carson mentioned, there are options on campus like Browns where you can actually go in and use your flex dollars or your swipes um, to get food. So during COVID, this all looked a little bit different. All of our houses were actually turned into singles versus um, doubles and triples. Um, and also face masks were required and you would be put into, you know, sort of a little social pod with the people that you live with. And this was all to sort of ensure that we were um, in compliance with COVID-19 CDC guidelines. A little bit about transfer and continuing student housing. So after your freshman year, you have a lot of options for where you want to live. Um, so one of them is campus housing. So similar to everything Amy just said, same kind of thing. You can apply for housing on campus to live in those dorms and suites again. 
if you want to do that, totally an option. Um, as Amy mentioned, freshmen do get priority. However, the school does try and make it so that people who apply for on-campus housing as continuing students um, can get it, but it, freshmen are the priority um, for that. Other options we have is International House, which is really awesome. You can see that in the top left-hand corner there, kind of the center of your screen. I've heard that their food is fantastic, so definitely check that out. We have affiliated properties, and those are more apartments that are associated with the campus as well. Um, so you can apply through the campus and kind of apply for an apartment, um, which is another really great option. There's off-campus apartments. That's what I live in at Berkeley. That is more of kind of you're on your own, so you go and look at apartments that are being rented out and you apply, you have your landlord, and it's not associated with the school. We also have co-op housing, which is a really, really great housing option. Um, you'll live with more people in a larger house. And then rent is actually lowered because you perform chores around the house. So maybe you'll cook meal a couple times a week or you'll clean or do kind of gardening things, things like that. So really reduce the rent. So if you're looking for a cheaper option, that's really awesome. And the people, my friends that are in co-op housing have just such strong connections with the people in their house. It's really like a family. So that's an also a really great option. We also have Greek housing. So if you want to join a sorority or fraternity, you can live in their houses as well, which are also really great. So lots of awesome housing options. And if you're not a great cook, you don't really know how to cook, or you just think you're not going to have time to, be able to cook for yourself, if you're living off campus, you can um, buy a meal plan option as well and still have access to those dining halls so you don't have to cook for yourself if that is something you're interested in. And you can see more information about all these options on the Cal Housing website. It's housing.berkeley.edu. I definitely agree with Carson on International House. I went there once for a brunch and they had French toast and a kombucha tap. And I was like, wow, this is really luxury at its finest. So I highly recommend if you ever get the chance to go up there and try their food. So moving on, we're going to be talking about health and safety, um, specifically university health services. So we have a lot of different resources. Um, students are required to have health insurance. So there was a student health insurance plan called SHIP. If you already have, you know, your own health insurance or you're under your parents' health insurance, you can waive that, which is what um, I've been doing for the past two years years, but um, sort of on campus resources that you are able to gain access to includes urgent care, primary care, and physical therapy. Um, there's also this past year been a lot of COVID testing and tracing. And so I actually went up to Berkeley this past year and it, my room and I were able to get weekly COVID tests, which was a resource that I would not have been able to access here in San Diego. Um, so that was definitely sort of let me breathe a lot easier <laughs> knowing that I was testing negative. Um, there are also psychological counseling that is available and that is available free of charge to start for all students, regardless of your health insurance plan, because we do know that mental health is a priority here at UC Berkeley. Um, in addition, we have Path to Care, um, which is a center that leads the effort to try and ensure that our campus is free of sexual harassment, um, stalking and intimate partner violence through advocacy, um, education and healing. Um, and as well as Carson has mentioned, we do have a graduate school of optometry. So as somebody who wears glasses, it's really nice to know that if my glasses break or if I think something's wrong with my vision, I can just hop in and sort of get an eye vision um, test from somebody who's training to become an optometrist. Um, and also, I think some of my favorite things to talk about are the different stress relief um, efforts that are led by students at UC Berkeley campus. Um, you can see there's a girl taking a selfie with a llama. So that's a part of Llama Palooza and essentially um, during the semester, llamas were brought onto the glade and you can sort of pet them and hang out with them. And I had no idea that this was a thing my freshman year. So I was very bamboozled and bewildered when I walked out of class and suddenly there are just llamas everywhere. Um, there's also Pause for Mental Health and that's a club on campus where their only job is to bring cute cuddly animals onto campus for you to pet and cuddle. Um, so you can find them on Sprout Plaza usually and there'll be a dog or a cat and you can just sort of hug them as needed. And so there are a lot of different um, resources available to you. Definitely check out Lollapalooza. That's my favorite event on campus. So definitely check it out. It is so fun. And I'm going to transition into campus safety. So Berkeley is in an urban area. Um, so Berkeley has a lot of resources to help keep students safe. I personally have never felt unsafe. I've never needed to use any of the emergency services. I don't know anyone that's felt unsafe. Um, but we do have these resources just in case. And I find a lot of comfort in that. So we have the UC Police Department or UCPD located on campus. We also have blue light poles, which you can see in kind of the bottom left picture there. Um, blue light poles, they're located all around campus. They have a blue light on top so you can see them. Uh, if you do a 360, pretty much anywhere on campus, you should be able to see one. And if there is an emergency and something happens, you just go over, push the little button, and then the UC Police Department will be notified of where you are. They can talk to you and they will be at your location within, a, I think, two or three minutes. 
um, which is really awesome as well. We have Warn Me, which is a system where students can sign up with their phone number or email and they'll receive alerts for any safety concerns on campus or just kind of honestly any like things like if you're going to class and like, hey, there's a peaceful protest scheduled at this time, just be aware like on this, if you're going on this kind of road, there's going to be a peaceful protest. And it'll also tell you the protest has ended. So just not even like emergency type things, just more so you know what's going on on campus as well. Um, and parents can also sign up for that. So my parents will sign up for that and like getting those notifications as well. In the residence halls, we have three point security to make sure that just students are getting into those residence halls. So your student ID, you have to scan that um, to get into your own building, into the elevator, and then you also need your key to get into your room. And at night, there's also someone to check in people um, if you have any guests or anything into the residence hall as well. So making sure that just students are getting into those buildings. We also have night services as well. So we have the night safety shuttle. This is a free shuttle for students and it just goes around the campus until about 3 a.m. And then after 3 a.m. it actually becomes a door-to-door -door service. So it'll take you from wherever you are to wherever you need to go. I've taken the night safety shuttle just because my organization um, would have meetings late at night on the kind of other side of campus from my dorm. And sometimes I honestly just didn't want to walk all the way back to my dorm. So I hopped on the night safety shuttle and dropped me off right in front of my dorm, which was really great. And there's also Bear Walk, which is another resource where you can call and uh, CSOs, their uh, campus uh, safety officers. Um, there are other students, it's an on-campus job and they're trained by UC Police Department. They wear bright yellow shirts and they'll come to where you are and walk with you to wherever you need to go. Whether that's another building on campus, whether that's your dorm room, whether it's an apartment off campus, um, the BART station, which is the Bay Area Rapid Transit Station, which is right off campus, they'll walk with you there so you don't have to walk by yourself. It's also a great way to just make a new friend. You know, it's another student, you're gonna walk for 10 minutes. I've heard they're really great conversationalists. So that's another great resource too. And also another cool thing is that on your student ID, all of these emergency numbers, all the bear walk numbers, things like that, they're all on your student ID card as well. So you don't have to try and, you know, if something happens, you don't have to look up a number to call. It's all on your student ID so that you have it um, in case anything happens. And like I said, I've never felt unsafe on campus. I don't know anyone that's had anything happen, but I do appreciate that there are those resources there. Just echoing what Carson said, I've also felt incredibly safe on campus, but definitely grateful that there are so many resources available to us. So moving on to student resources um, and student development, there are a lot of different identity and um, community resources available to you. For example, the Center for Educational Justice and Community Engagement includes six different offices that each target different um, subsets of our student population, and they offer one-on-one -on -one mentoring as well as spaces for students from diverse backgrounds. For example, the Chicanx and Latinx Student Development Center or the Gender Equity Resource Center. Um, th we also have the Associated Students of University of California, also known our, as our ASUC, and that's essentially our version of sort of um, our student government, and it's actually one of the largest and most um, autonomous student organizations in the nation, which I think is super cool, and so there's a lot of ways to sort of get involved with that if that's something you're interested in. And we also have a transfer student center as well as an undocumented student center um, in order to provide resources for those students. Um, and in the same vein of support and equity, there's this disabled students program. So if for whatever reason you need some sort of accommodation, for example, extra time on exams or somebody to help you take notes in class, the DSP um, office can help ensure that you sort of get those accommodations as needed. And there's also basic needs center, um, which ensures that the basic needs of all of our students are met through um, different programs such as the food pantry, which um, provides emergency food as well as emergency housing. And so there are a lot of different resources on campus to ensure um, that you guys are getting the help that you need. Next, we're going to talk about student life. So we have over a thousand registered student organizations or clubs. They're really just kind of clubs. We call them student organizations. And they are on a range of tons of different things from professional to just kind of hobbies, things like that. So if you're interested and in, if you have any interest, there's most likely a student organization devoted to that. And you just have to be able to find it on campus, which is really great. There's also a lot of volunteering on campus. So you can volunteer on the Berkeley campus, the surrounding community. Um, so that's a really strong emphasis as well. You can also get an on-campus job. So through the Career Center, they have um, career fairs to help you get internships, help you find jobs. Um, and then also you can work on campus. Um, Amy and I, and we are, we work as campus ambassadors. This is a on-campus job that we have. I might be a little biased. I think it's the best on-campus job, but you know, a little bit of bias there, but I don't know. Um, and then next, we also have internships. So we're located really close to San Francisco and Silicon Valley. So there's a ton of internship opportunities for students as well. 
You can also study abroad. If you want to go abroad for a semester, you can study abroad. I think it's fun to just look through the different programs. Um, I'm hoping to be able to study abroad at some point during my career here. Um, so that's also an option. And they have study abroad programs for every different major. Um, there's also barrier exploration. So we're in the Bay Area. There's so many things to do. You can go to museums, you can go on hikes, you can explore the city. There's uh, the Greek theater right next to campus and got concerts. So really just exploring the Bay, there are so many things to do. I was actually just making a bucket list. And so as Carson said, I didn't know there were so many things to do in the Bay Area, but I'm super excited to be able to explore that um, as I continue my education at UC Berkeley. So talking about athletics, we have different levels of competition. Division one are our official um, school teams. So they're the people that you're gonna see on TV. For example, you can see our Cal football team at the top left. Um, we also have club level. That's when you, know, you still wanna compete with other schools, but you aren't necessarily interested in being a student athlete. Um, and I believe Carson is a part of a club sport as well. And then there's intramural or recreational. That's essentially my level where, you know, you may not really know anything about the sport, but you sort of just want to have fun and meet people and get some exercise in. Um, so we have a couple of different buildings on campus that are dedicated to our athletics department, including California Memorial Stadium. Um, I think there's no better way to sort of immerse yourself in school pride than to go to a football game and to sit at the, at the bench, which is um, at the 50 yard line. And you get to be amongst students and sort of cheering um, for our team. There's also Haas Pavilion, which is home to our basketball, volleyball, and gymnastics team. And then there's the rec recreational sports facility, which is sort of our gymnasium, and students get free access to all the equipment as well as the classes that are taught there. And I think something that I definitely didn't know about UC Berkeley was how many Olympic medals we had. So we have 207, and 117 of those are actually gold medals, which I think is super cool. Sorry about that slide didn't quite want to change there. Um, so really quickly, I'm going to talk about some remote resources. So all the resources on campus, we still have um, when the last year and things were online and really focus on building a community and making sure students can still interact with their fellow um, golden bears. So there's lots of social media networks for student organizations, for majors, for programs, the school in general. There's a social media network for pretty much everything, which is really awesome. Um, student groups and clubs also were able to still host events online. Um, it was correct. I was on I'm on the club bar pole team, and we would have virtual like kind of workouts once a week, which was really fun, and lots of online adaptations. There's also department webinars. So different departments uh, all of the time will have speakers come and talk to students, and that's been online, which is really great. I actually think it's been more convenient because instead of going and trying to find a time and going to the room that the speaker's at, I can just click the link right after class and hop on. So I've actually been able to go to more of those um, webinars and see those guest lectures than I did actually in person, which I think was really awesome. And we also have Golden Bear Orientation or GBO. And that's the first week um, before your, your freshman year when classes start right before then, uh, you go to orientation, you have an orientation group and you get to do a whole bunch of activities, learn more about the campus, uh, meet people that live near you. Um, you can explore the Bay, which is really fun. Um, I'm actually going to be participating in GBO and uh, having my own orientation group this year. So I'm really excited. Um, so definitely if you're, when you go to GBO, go to the events, they're so fun. I met my best friends through GBO, um, but that's just a little bit about all of the remote resources and really building community on campus. As Carson mentioned, GBO is great. I actually met my first friend at Berkeley at GBO and they just graduated. So feeling a little nostalgic right now. I'm talking about libraries and research. So we have 24 official libraries on campus and they contain over 13 million volumes. And something that's been really handy this year during the pandemic and during remote learning has been having access to the extensive online resources. Um, as somebody who does a lot of literature review for her research, there's nothing better than, you know, finding a research paper that um, is sort of perfect perfectly encapsulates what you're trying to figure out. Finding out it's like 30 plus dollars, but then realizing you can get it for free through UC Berkeley. Um, as we've mentioned before, UC Berkeley is a huge research institution. And so the way that I've gotten all of my research is through the undergraduate research apprenticeship program. This is sort of a semesterly program where essentially professors who are intent on getting undergraduate student researchers will post their proje projects and you can apply and it's super easy. And I think what's great about this is that because they're looking for undergraduate students, they know that you might not have any research back but they're really there to help ensure that you're getting mentorship along with research um, experience. But there's also a lot of different about um, departmental opportunities. So if you know you don't find what you want through URAP, you can definitely find it through the different departments we have on campus. And just a quick note, we have so many famous alumni and professors on campus. Um, Amy mentioned Professor Doudna, you can see kind of the center there. She just won the 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. 
for working on CRISPR, which is really awesome. We're very proud. Um, you can see some other really famous alumni. We have Chris Pine, Stephen Chu, Beverly Cleary. Um, I loved her books when I was really little. I to think that like I'm going to the same school she did, I just think is really awesome. Um, so we have many famous alumni and we just wanted to show you guys just a few of them. I also grew up um, on Beverly Cleary's books. So um, super cool that we we're going to um, the school that she went to. And so we're gonna end with looking at some campus highlights before coming to Berkeley. I didn't know the Bay Area had so much nature. Um, so I was really surprised when I realized that you could sort of get the best of both worlds. You know, you can get this urban, different urban opportunities. So I can go to a story slam one night and then wake up the next morning bright and early and go on a hike. And there are a lot of different opportunities to really sort of explore the Bay Area and the nature that's surrounding you. Um, for example, I took a hiking PE class this past semester. It was super cool. Every week we went to a different hiking spot. Um, there's also courses that actually take you on field trips. So I'm planning to take a herpetology class um, where you essentially look at different amphibians and vertebrates. Um, and so that I think will be super exciting as well. But Berkeley is such a great area to be around and there's so many different things to explore. And I hope that you know everybody who's at this tour gets a chance to do that sometime. Yay, thank you both so much. That was a really great overview of our campus and everything that it involves. So now we're gonna go ahead and move on into our Q&A, starting with a question for Amy. So are there efficient career and networking resources and research opportunities as, as well available for undergraduates in order to help them succeed? I think that that is a fantastic question. And I think that those resources are available on campus. For example, there's a career center. And I, prior to coming to Berkeley, you know, never did research. I've never even written a resume. And I remember having to do it um, when I entered Berkeley and I was so nervous, I didn't know what to put on it. Um, but I actually just attended a resume workshop hosted by the career center. And I was like, wow, I've sort of been doing this wrong the entire time. Um, but they definitely, um, you know, they can provide one-on-one -on -one mentorship. They have different workshops that are available to you. And as I mentioned with research, there are so many opportunities at Berkeley. All of our faculty and staff are doing research. And so whether that's through something like the undergraduate research apprenticeship program, or if, you know, you're just talking to your, pro your professor at office hours and you get to ask, you know, can I join your research group? I think there are a lot of ways to really get involved. Um, and as I said, you know, a lot of students like myself don't come from a research intensive background in high school. And so you definitely do get to learn these skills, not just through doing research, but also through your courses. So I think there's a lot of opportunities and I think anybody can really succeed both at Berkeley doing research and beyond in their careers. Really good answer. Thank you so much. It's a very, like if I heard that as an incoming student, I would be very reassured and you should be because Berkeley really helps you get the opportunities that you need in order to succeed. Um, okay, the next question is for Carson. So would you say that Berkeley is more competitive or collaborative? That's a really great question. This is one of my favorite questions um, that I get. And because when I was coming to Berkeley, I had heard like, oh, it's super cutthroat. People are going to like purposely tell you the wrong answers so you fail exams and I was really nervous and I don't know where that stereotype comes from because I've never experienced anything like that all of my classes honestly have been really collaborative I think most of the competition is kind of competing with yourselves because everyone at Berkeley is so great and so you just want to push yourself to be the best you can be um, I haven't found anyone trying to like sabotage people or anything like that a lot of my classes actually I'll have people like sitting next to me like hey um, do you want to start a study group like, yes, absolutely. And I'll get a study group going. I'll have group chats. Um, even I was in an organic chemistry group chat in the fall of this year. And at the end of the semester, someone, I'm not kidding, sent a message at the end and said, this is my first like real science class at Berkeley. I was really scared because I heard it was so competitive and I would not have passed the class without you guys. And I have it screenshot on my phone. So I promise it, I'm not lying. I'm not making it up. It's really true. Um, I think that people are really just there to help you. So it is, classes are hard, they are difficult. You're gonna have to work in them, but you're not gonna have anyone, I don't think, trying to sabotage you or purposely give you the wrong information. Um, that has not been my experience. It's been very collaborative and everyone just wants to be able to succeed. Yeah, I would say that I compete more against myself than like there's competition between other people because I just put a lot of pressure on myself. And I think that's maybe where that stereotype comes from, but it's a very collaborative space. Okay, so someone asks, what is there to do off campus in the city of Berkeley just for fun? So Amy, if you wanna take that one. Yeah, I think there's so much to do um, off campus at Berkeley. I grew up in the suburbs. And so, you know, going moving to a city, I didn't realize there were so many opportunities. 
Um, but there's, you know, anything that you're interested in from trying nice restaurants to going to museums, you know, Berkeley's a really historic city. And so there's a lot to explore and unpack there. Um, one of my favorite things I think I mentioned briefly during one of the slides is to go to story slams that are monthly. And so we go and you sort of get to listen to different people's stories. And I think it's really interesting. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in nature, if you're interested in, you know, networking opportunities, if you just sort of want to walk around, I think Berkeley is a beautiful city and the public trans transit systems super comprehensive. So you can sort of essentially do anything you want at Berkeley and beyond Berkeley you know SF and the rest of the Bay Area is just sort of a BART right away and so there's definitely a lot of things that you can also do there. Yes there's a lot of very fun things I've loved like taking the bus taking BART going to San Francisco or Oakland to see concerts and things like that so very fun things um, and in the city of Berkeley itself as well. Okay our next question is for Carson. So what surprised you about campus life at Berkeley and what makes Berkeley unique? Yeah, that's another really great question. Um, one thing that I not really surprised, but I think is just really new about Berkeley is students are so passionate about everything. Like every person I've met has been so passionate, whatever they're involved in, whether that's their studies, whether it's an organization, um, their research, things like that. So I think that's one of the really unique things about Berkeley is just everyone is so passionate what they do. And one thing that I was really surprised about Berkeley, um, we actually talked about in the tour, so hopefully people aren't as surprised when they come, but I didn't know, um, is all the nature on campus. I really, like, is in an urban area, and I'd visit campus and really just spent most of my time in kind of downtown Berkeley. And then I lived on the north side of campus um, my freshman year, and that's where I live now. And there's so much nature. There's so much nature on campus, but especially, I think, on the north side. I live about two blocks from campus, and I literally have deer sleeping outside my window every day. Um, I have turkeys that come by. Um, I see my, I just got back to San Diego a few weeks ago and my housemates have been texting me and they're like, oh, by the way, we saw two like fawns outside today. Um, you should come back. And so I really love all of the nature on campus. It is so beautiful. The creek that runs through, um, there's so many trees. The squirrels are fantastic. They're very friendly. Um, so I, Amy mentioned and could not put any better, the best of both worlds. And that's something that I really wasn't expecting when I got to Berkeley. I didn't realize how much nature there actually was on campus. Um, so, and I really, really love that. So that's what surprised me. That also came as a surprise to me. I thought it was very much city, but it's, you've got the, the hiking trails and everything. So you definitely have that sense of um, being in nature. Okay, so our next question I'm gonna pose to both of you. Are there things you would change about the university? It's a really good question. Um, we'll start with Amy. I think that's an incredibly good question. Um, and okay, I will admit, I think Berkeley's done a fantastic job of transitioning to remote semester, but currently if there's anything I could change, I think it'd be that we'd be able to be back in person. Um, so we are planning to be back in person for the most part, um, this upcoming fall semester. But I think, you know, sort of, as Carson said, just sort of being able to walk around and sort of meet people. Like I sort of loved um, going to, for example, a midterm or an exam and just sort of turning to the person next to me, like, are you feeling sort of nervous about this? Cause I feel really nervous and just sort of being able to bond that way. And that's something that's not as readily accessible um, when you're in a remote learning environment. Although I will admit to missing um, being able to sort of take my finals in a bathrobe. I think it's maybe less appropriate when you're in person um, but definitely super excited to sort of be back in person and be able to see people and go to in-person events and whatnot. Yeah, I similarly, I do, I just love the school so much. That's why I wanted this job because I love talking about Berkeley. The one thing I guess that I would change if I could is the school is great. You can walk from one side to the other in about 10 minutes. However, there is a very large hill on campus and it is, when you first get there, I'm not gonna lie, it's hard, it, you're gonna be tired. The first time you walk up it, it's gonna happen. After like a week, it's gonna be fine. I walked up it every single day. I still walk up it every single day and it's totally fine. But if I can make that hill just like a little less steep, just a little bit, I totally would. But honestly, that's the only thing. And it's not even that bad because when I was looking for housing this year, I moved farther up the hill and I left my apartment. So it's really not even that big of a deal, but that is the one thing I guess I would make it just a little bit less steep. And also, you know, if you want to take a bike on campus, you totally can. I see more people though with those like electronic, those motorized like skateboards and things because it's probably a little bit harder to bike up that hill. But, um, but if you are interested in that, totally can. That's the only thing. Those are both really good answers. I think I would also lessen the incline of the hills just to make life easier. 
Okay, we have another question for you, Carson. Well, actually, and for both of you. So what is your Berkeley story? So why did you come here? Why did you choose the university? And what's like inspired you to stay here and even become a tour guide telling everybody else all the great things about Berkeley? Um, so we'll start with Amy, actually. Yeah, so I feel like my journey with Berkeley is a little bit unorthodox. I actually chose Berkeley twice. Um, so as a graduating senior, I applied, got in. My parents, um, who are both immigrants from Taiwan and Berkeley, you know, has such a renowned international reputation. They're like, oh my God, you got into UC Berkeley. Like, of course you're going. We don't even need to consider any of the other schools. Um, so I came to Cal Day and, you know, it was really great. I think Cal Day is a fantastic um, event that we put on, but you know, I sort of was standing around people who would be my future peers and I just didn't really feel ready. I felt like they were all super passionate and they knew exactly what they wanted. And that wasn't something that I necessarily felt in myself. I felt like I'd spent high school sort of being a cookie cutter student, doing everything I thought I had to do to get into college and not really taking the time um, to sort of understand what it is that I'm interested in, what it is that I'm passionate about. Um, so I actually decided to rescind my acceptance and take a gap year and I reapplied. Um, and thank God that I got back in because now looking at it in retrospect, I can't believe that I sort of decided to then not go to Berkeley, but got back in. Um, and as an incoming freshman, I was definitely still, you know, a little bit nervous. I had some reservations. I wasn't sure if, you know, Berkeley would necessarily be the place for me. Um, but I found that I absolutely love Berkeley so much so that I decided to become a campus ambassador. And I think what I love most about Berkeley is that all of those reservations that I sort of had about myself, you know, I didn't know if I was cut out to do research. I didn't know if I could do this or that. Um, Berkeley's really pushed me to sort of break down those self-imposed barriers and to, you know, sort of prove to myself that you can do anything that you really want to do. And also that you're never going to be completely fully baked. Like you're always in a state of becoming. And I think Berkeley with all of its endless opportunities and resources is a fantastic place to sort of really shape and craft the person and the life it is that you want to lead. And so I absolutely love Berkeley. Um, and I think, you know, choosing it twice, I think I made the perfect decision both times. Yeah, my Berkeley story, I, you know, I applied to Berkeley and I applied to a bunch of other schools and I didn't really know, I didn't know where I wanted to go. I'm totally honest, didn't really know. And I got my admissions, I got into Berkeley and I remember I was sitting at my desk and I told my mom and she got super excited. She was like, oh my God, you, you got into Berkeley. That's so exciting. And then, but then, you know, we were really excited, but I still didn't really know if I wanted to go there or not. And then I went to Cal Day, um, somewhere to Amy and I really did love it. I love the passion the students had. I really loved the campus. Um, I was really excited. And then I went to visit other schools though as well. And I, there's other schools are really great too. Um, so I went home after Cal, and I was like, Berkeley was really great, but this other school was really great. And, you know, this school was really great. And I still just don't really know. So I thought about it for a really long time and no one would give me advice. I'd ask people their advice and no one, no one would give it to me, which I really appreciate now. But at the time it was really frustrating. I was like, just please, like, what do you think? And it's your decision. So I thought about it for a long time and finally decided on Berkeley. And I told my family and I was expecting to be really excited. You know, I finally made a decision. I've been worrying about it for months. And there was no real reaction it was just they're like yep we're not surprised that's where you were happier we knew it as soon as you're on campus that's where you were going it just took you a long time to figure it out and they were so right because I do love campus and a funny thing too is when I was a freshman in high school I wanted a college sweatshirt and I didn't just randomly I just wanted a college sweatshirt and I ended up getting a Berkeley sweatshirt and I totally forgot about it actually until this last summer I was looking through my closet and I saw this Berkeley sweatshirt that I'd gotten freshman year and totally forgotten about. And so I think it was kind of meant to be because I did end up going to the school where I got my first college sweatshirt from um, and without even knowing. So it was kind of meant to be, I guess, in the end. Um, but I do love campus so much. And that's why I have this job. I love sharing my love of Berkeley um, to you all as well. Oh, thank you both so much. I love hearing Berkeley stories and like why everybody, how everybody ended up here. So it's very lovely. Um, now, before we say goodbye today, I'd like to share just a few resources so that all of our guests today can stay in contact with us. We have our U Visit tour, which is a 3D virtual walkthrough of our campus. You can kind of really get a feel for what our campus looks like, what it feels like to be a student walking from class to class. You can also follow us on Instagram at Visit UC Berkeley. If you have any questions that we weren't able to get to today, or if you think of any later on, you can send an email to tour at berkeley.edu and a student just like the three of us you're meeting today will be able to answer your question. 
We also have the Bear Talk blog where students just like us are writing about our day to day lives and what's going on at Berkeley in classes, but also beyond and just general student life. We also have various recorded virtual visits available on our YouTube channel so you can hear from more guides about their perspectives as students here. We're also celebrating our 150 years of women being admitted to campus so you can check out 150w.berkeley.edu. And finally, or not finally, but we do also have our admissions presentation at admissions.berkeley.edu slash visit. So you can check that out and get all of those an questions answered. And now finally, we have our ambassador student panels and engineering specific visits that you can sign up for at the same place you signed up for this tour here today. And before we officially say goodbye, I would like to thank both Amy and Carson and all of our guests today for joining us. And I would like to end this tour with a big go bears on three. So if you two would like to join me. All right, one, two, three, go, go bears. bears.